Hi and welcome. This is Jennifer Miner. Today I am sharing a project that I'm calling a Victorian inspired card. And some of the techniques that this project features are wrinkle free distress, die cutting, pearlex powders, heat embossing, and some handmade paper roses. So we're going to get started in the wrinkle free distress technique. So I'm just applying fired brick, gathered twigs and frayed burlap right to my craft mat, giving that a spritz with water and then just taking my background paper and picking up that the puddles of ink. And you see it's fairly light this first time. So I clean off my surface and I'm going to do a coat of just the fired brick same technique apply the ink give it some water and that um, ink reacts and beads up so then i picked up just a little bit more of that red at this point i heat dried it with my heat gun and then came back and did another coat with the two browns and red just wanted a more vibrant and intense background so once that had dried i went ahead and took my mesh stencil and applied some Versamark ink over it and then I'm just painting on this gold Perlex powder right into the Versamark which you can see takes on the stencil and then I went ahead and did that um, exact same thing Versamark through the stencil and then painted over it with the Perlex powder this is a really neat technique it gives a lot of sheen and shimmer I really like it. So next I'm going to stamp this kind of floral image on the lower right hand corner using copper uh, reg regular pigment ink and then I did apply a little bit of this glitter Perlex. Uh, it's called sparkle copper. It didn't stick as well as I kind of hoped to the stamped image but there was still some that got stuck kind of to the page and then my next step was just regular old stamp in the top left hand corner this is another Tim Holtz image and then next I went ahead and used my edge distressing tool just along um, all four edges if you guys have uh, looked at my uh, gallery or seen my videos, you know I am a big fan of a edge distressing and then inking over that edge distressing. So once I complete that here, I am going to apply with my ink blending tool some frayed burlap ink. You can see that here. And just gives a little more dimension and depth to the edge of the paper. And I did get a little bit of Perlex powder on my ink pad, but it kind of just wiped right up with um, a little paper towel or baby wipe. And then next I'm going to go to work on my die cut bird. I just die cut this uh, with a Tim Holtz steel rule die and some paper, pattern paper from Prima. And there, just add a little bit of distressing to the edges, again, using that frayed burlap. And I also die cut from that same Prima set called the Second Wind, this damask border shape. I'm just kind of pulling the extra pieces out. And then I'm going to add a little bit more distress ink, again, using that frayed burlap. And you can see it did trim it down so it would fit on my card. And I'm being fairly careful with that application since the pattern paper is really pretty thin. And so to glue this down, I'm going to use my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. I really like this uh, adhesive. It's my go-to for anything paper if I want to use like a liquid glue. Because I feel like it doesn't warp or bubble the paper at all. And it does dry very quickly. And now I'm going to do some grunge board work. I am using a pre-cut piece. It's um, a lock 
So I'm inking the centerpiece there with black silk ink. And then I'm going to emboss that with glitter black embossing powder from Zing. And just heat set that. And then I'm going to take the outer piece of the lock. And I went ahead and distressed this with the frayed burlap. And it just wasn't quite as intense as I was hoping for. So while I really liked the shade and how it looked, I just needed more color. So I went ahead and applied a coat of uh, Vintage Photo Distress Stain. And that was really kind of that value that I was looking for. And then I went ahead and embossed over that with Vintage Photo Distress Ink, or a Distress Embossing Powder. Gave that a really good shake to distribute those crystals heat set that and you can see rubbed off those extra crystals and I decided I wanted um, to add just a little bit of more gold to this element so I just directly brushed a little more Perlex powder this time I'm using the Aztec gold right on there and it really stuck right in those little crevices from embossing powder and then I am applying my kind of red panel there to the same pattern paper that my birds cut from. I'm just kind of working to lay that out. And then again my Scotch quick dry adhesive. And then I set an acrylic block on top of this just to kind of make sure that nothing pulls away from the paper as it's drying. And then I'm going to do a little more um, stamping on my bird. I've got this great kind of floral cluster. Again, another Tim Holtz image. Stamp that with Versamark. Then apply the gold zing powder. And heat set that. Just love the way that looked on this. And I used some tweezers to poke, poke some holes just where you see those three little um, kind of where the lock would be adhered on the door and then just using these gold brads to adhere uh, to for el additional element. And then I added a very large gem brad from my mind's eye. And then at this point, I really decided that my bird needed a little more um, intensity or a little more structure. So I went ahead and uh, cut another shape out of grunge board. And now on to the flowers. So for this, I cut out about six of these flower shapes from the tattered florals die. And then I'm just applying a little bit of the tattered rose distress ink for a little bit of depth on that color. Now I don't have the, on this video I'm not going to take the time to go through the whole assembly just kind of get you started because these just went together kind of an organic process but this is how that started. So I've just inked up my petals, cut them down the center and then I'm going to soften them with my paper blossom stylus. And then to add a little extra texture to these flowers, I am using my reverse tweezers to kind of just fold in some depressions. I've done three on each petal, so one in the center and one on each side. And it's just something totally different I had never done before. Just gave it a little more texture and a little um, kind of difference from a normal rose. And so then here you can see the assembled rows and really the bottom three components are the full roses and everything on the inside began with a single petal curled and then two petals curled around that and then three petals curled around that and working out to the larger shape. And again, I um, do have a video on my YouTube channel where I show you how to make a rose a slightly different shape but basically the same process. So just hot glue that add it to my card and then I'm going to show you how I did the leaves for the roses so just ink these babies up with a little bit of old olive distressing and then I'm going to add some frayed burlap on the edges 
And this is just a really fun green shade and I feel like it worked really well with the other color palette on the card. And there's the frag burlap on the edges. I actually have a plant in my house that looks just like this. It's kind of this bright green with brown edges. And then I also added a little bit of veining with just a stylus and down the back side. So just glue those leaves on. And then I did make a second rose exactly the same way, exactly the same process. And I um, just do that off camera. And there, that's the rose. And I found at our local craft store these fantastic Downton Abbey supplies. So I wanted, knew I wanted to put this fabric covered brad on this card. So since this is kind of in the center of the background, I'm just using a pair of tweezers to poke the hole to put the brad there. I don't have um, a long hole punch. And there you can see the card with the second rose added. So now I'm going to take this saying stuff set for again from Tim Holtz and I went ahead and stamped the frame and then inked that with the tattered rose dye. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment which is from the heart. Since that's the first time I actually stamped it on a piece of a uh, craft or a uh, scratch paper first just to make sure that it was going to um, stamp the way I'd hoped. So just added that. Then this I um, adhered to my card with foam tape and score tape just because it, it separated a little bit from the background and then adhered to the tail. And then at this point I'm just going to add my adhesive pearls and adhesive rhinestones. The set on the left is from Recollections and the set on the right, which is just the plain brown adhesive gems uh, is from Mark Richards. So just kind of apply those in a semi-random matter manner. Um, I tend to like kind of the clusters, but then also do a few individuals. So for my very last mat, I went ahead and I just took some Versamark ink and applied that to the edge of a piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to do just a single coat of gold embossing powder on this. And the reason I mentioned single coat, when you cover this large of a space with a single coat, it has a lot of kind of bumps and unevenness to it. It's not a solid gold sheet. And I actually feel like that really added to the overall visual interest. So I had thought about doing multiple coats, but I was really happy with that, the look of it. And so then you can see the card front. I've trimmed down that brown panel a little bit and just adding that to the gold. And then I did a top fold uh, five by seven card base for this and using my ATG there, applying my card. And that was it. This was a really fun card. Thank you so much for coming and watching my video today. Hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful day.